Here's Hakim Ziyech now. Looks for N'Golo Kante with a bit of space, shoots and N'Golo Kante, an unlikely goal scorer. A fantastic finish from Kante as he makes it 2-1 against Arsenal. Still Mo Salah, left foot, opens up space and wow. What even is Mo Salah? How did he generate that much power on a low driven finesse? So here we are back again with another episode of the Chelsea Career Mode series. This is episode number 20. Not gonna lie, it's kind of crazy that we're already 20 episodes into this series. We've had a pretty incredible start to our Premier League season so far. Just four points off the top. United have been perfect. We've drawn a couple of games, but we're unbeaten as well. Today's episode, more interesting Premier League games as we continue to make a push towards the top of the league. Normally, I wouldn't highlight a Carabao Cup game, but well, when it's against Man City, it's certainly gonna be an exciting one. Round of 16, Carabao Cup. We're going to the Etihad Stadium to take on Man City. Now, we've got a lot going on in today's episode. Premier League games against Spurs. We've got Champions League action. Carabao Cup against Man City. It's going to be one hell of an episode. And if you guys are enjoying the Chelsea Career Mode series, keep the support coming in. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. Let's get this one underway. Starting off the episode with a press conference. And if you guys want to see your questions being answered, drop them down in the comments section below. First one of the day. Who do you think is the most underrated player in the team? Now, that is an interesting question. And if I can choose any player from the whole squad for being underrated, it'll probably be Ruben Loftus-Cheek. He probably deserves way more opportunities to play, but because of our midfield, if you know how good it is, he kind of misses out. When Kante was injured, I remember Loftus-Cheek replaced him for a couple of weeks or so, and he was fantastic, but... Yes, yeah, since then we haven't really been able to use him regularly and whenever he plays, he's been fantastic. So I think in terms of being underrated, Loftus-Cheek is definitely up there. Fantastic footballer and we're lucky to have him. We haven't even talked about him much in this series, but yeah, I think he is the most underrated player. Let me know in the comment section who you think is the player that's the most underrated that we've got in our squad. Moving on, why don't you give Billy Gilmore more game time because he's insane. You're not wrong, Billy Gilmore is a fantastic footballer and this season we've kind of struggled to give him game time. Last season he played quite a bit of football, was decent as well, scored some really really important goals and yeah he's been fantastic ever since and even this season in the four games he's played, very impressive stats, one goal and three assists and tell you what, we're going to have to start playing him more often. And in this next game in the Carabao Cup against City, Billy Gilmore will start. And I'll try and give him more game time because, let's be real, he deserves to be playing more football because he is just brilliant. We saw what he can do last season. Let's hope he can replicate those kind of performances when never given the chance. Next up, now that Rüdiger's morale is increasing, are you still interested in selling him? The drama with Antonio Rüdiger continues. So... Last episode, we had an offer from Barcelona, then we had an offer from Liverpool, Juve. A lot of big cl clubs are interested in Rüdiger. And also, Rüdiger has been chatting to me about potentially wanting to leave. But last episode, things took a different turn as it seems like Rüdiger is okay with staying. I don't know what's going on with him, but so far, by the looks of it, Rüdiger is going to stay at Chelsea. As long as his morale is normal and he's enjoying his life here at Chelsea, I'm okay with keeping him because I really rate this guy. Unless we get like an astronomical offer, I'm not going to go out of my way to sell Rüdiger. I'm happy with the situation. He can be at Chelsea. Hopefully, he wants to continue here. That's something we don't know about. I guess only time will tell. But for now, I do have Rüdiger in my plans. With that press conference done, let's move on. So it's N'Golo Kante who ends up winning at the player of the episode award. And can't say I'm surprised. He was phenomenal in that last episode. Yes, Salah gave him a tough challenge, but... Kante scoring that winner against Arsenal, picking up assists, had to win this award. You guys in the comments section were raving about Kante and well, he's won the player of the episode award. Kinda feel like it's time to change up the look of our manager. We've been using that blue-white hoodie for a long time. Why not just switch up the colours again? Because of the mod, we've got one of the official manager outfits. So there you go, gonna be using this orange and black variant for a few episodes and then we'll maybe switch again. Let's try and push further ahead with our season objectives. Getting more tackles with long lane, getting them right is gonna be key. More man of the match performances from Kovacic would be lovely. As I said before, Billy Gilmore is gonna get a big chance in this episode to shine again. Goals from Werner and Salah will be really helpful. As the Chelsea manager, we're yet to win a single trophy for the club. And that's something that's hanging over our head. We need to get that first trophy 
and maybe the Carabao Cup could just be that as we take on Man City in the round of 16. It's going to be a challenging fixture, but I think I've got enough in the tank to get a result over them. So I'm going to be taking this one fairly seriously. We're going to be playing this game and not simulating it. Of course, since it's the Carabao Cup, it just makes perfect sense to rotate this squad completely and give the youth a chance. So we've got Billy Gilmore, Tammy Abraham, Hudson Adoy, Ansu Fati, all of them starting this game. Also, Kurt Zuma gets his first appearance for the season, captaining the side as well. This is our team. I'm ready for Man City. So that's the Man City team we're facing. And of course, these guys want to take the Carabao Cup as seriously as the Champions League. They've got Aguero, Sane, KDB, Saul. I mean, huh, this is going to be one hell of a fixture. Chelsea versus Man City. Let's kick things off. I mean, I don't need to mention this, but against the big boys, we do have a good record in this series. I mean, because we play on the counter and our style is super effective against teams that like to keep possession. So... I'm expecting more of the same on the counter. We could hurt Man City quite a bit, but since they've got that added quality of their first team players, I'm not so sure if we've got enough in the tank, but we'll try. We'll try our best. Here we go. Could be our first chance of the game. Mason Mount looking for Ansu Fati. It's brilliantly done. Cross coming back in for Tammy Abraham with the diving header. Maybe he could have gone for a volley or something. Fati did really well in that instance, but we have to take our chances. Tammy needs to be scoring that. Billy Gilmore looks for Tammy Abraham. He looks to be in the mood, I suppose. Still Tammy Abraham. A few step overs. Oh, that's brilliant from Tammy Abraham. Wow. Tammy Abraham has put us into the lead. Wasn't expecting it to be so easy. Tammy Abraham with a lovely step over. I don't know how he managed to pull that off because he ain't the most agile of players. But he's pulled it off against Kevin De Bruyne. Sent him the wrong way. And then bang, a lovely finish there from the young English forward. I guess you guys are right. We've got to be giving Tammy more opportunities when he's doing stuff like that against the big boys. Chelsea have the advantage now against City. Pep Guardiola looks furious. Let's keep pushing. Sees Billy Gilmore. Billy Gilmore back to Mason Mount. This is quality football. Mount looks for the pass for Loftus. She controls it so well. And what's going on here? In the Carabao Cup, we've got Man City sitting down and applauding us because we're playing some fabulous football. Mason Mount's cross to Loftus Sheik was fantastic and the player we just called underrated has just done that. I mean, look at the ball control there. Chests it down, lets it bounce once and then bang. A brilliant finish past the City keeper. Mind you, this is City's first team up against our second team pretty much. And we're still dominating. Like, against the big boys, this Chelsea team is virtually unstoppable. We lead 2-0. Honestly, I'm delighted with our performance so far because we've been ruthless. We've been really direct and we've taken the game to City and we've got a 2-0 scoreline to show for it. More of the same in the second half. Lovely return for Tammy Abraham. Look at the strength there from Abraham. Holds the ball up really well and now it's Ansu Fati with a bit of neat dribbling. Back to Tammy Abraham. Has to be a goal and how has Edison managed to stop that? I have absolutely no idea. And by the way, why my manager is not wearing the orange hoodie or whatever i have no idea but regardless we should be making it 3-0 in that instance full time against man city and not gonna lie the second half was a bit dull but i'll take it though 2-0 clean sheet against pep guardiola city and we make it to the quarterfinals of the carabao cup i mean this was a wonderful performance especially that first half that this team put tammy abraham was fantastic Fati was decent hudson adoy was decent loftus cheek was probably man of the match like Honestly, very impressed with the team. And with that, it's now time to move on to the Premier League as we've got a game against Southampton away from home and we've got to keep winning to keep pace with Man United. It kind of feels fun having a title race with Manchester United instead of the usual Man City and Liverpool, although they're all still in the race. But we're up against Southampton, 10th in the Premier League away from home. I'm still expecting a win here. Our first team is fully ready for this one, completely fit because we rested all of them in that game in the Carabao Cup. So I'm expecting a win and we do walk away with a 2-1 win. A lot of yellow cards and all. Good to see the team putting effort and desire, I suppose. Pulisic and Mo Salah, the goal scorers for us. Three points secured. Okay, some transfer business to talk about. Liverpool have shown interest in purchasing Kurt Zuma, a player we are indeed looking to sell. I, I regret rejecting that 60 million offer from Everton. I'm an idiot. I should have done that. But anyways, we're going to negotiate to get that fee up because certainly if Everton are willing to pay 60, Liverpool can match that. You know what? I don't want this deal to fall through. So I'm going to be countering with 55. If you're willing to pay that, you can have Kurt Zuma. Don't really mind. 
They're only willing to go up to 43.7. Is that a joke, man? Okay, let's let's go to 52. 52 million and you can have Kurt Zuma. Don't mess around with me, Klopp. Pay the money and take him home. Come on, man. We're getting ripped apart here in terms of, like, the offers. Let's counter with 48 or 49 million and see if they're willing to pay. One thing with the realism mod does is if you have transfer listed a player, it's going to be, like, super hard to sell him for high value. And look at this. That's what's going to happen here. We we might actually benefit from not having Kurt Zuma on the transfer list because that's completely messing up our deals. Okay, so let me remove transfer list. There you go. Kurt Zuma is outside the transfer list and hopefully that means we get better offers for him. Home fixture against Moscow in the Champions League. I'm expecting a win even though I've gone with my second team for this one. 2-1 win. Ansu Fati scoring in the Champions League for us. Loftus cheek. Gets the back of the net as well. Perfect. Another dub in the Champions League. We're in a fantastic spot right now in the Champions League. That win that we had in the last episode over Leverkusen was massive. And now the next game that we've got against them is also going to be crucial because I think that will decide who finishes at the top of this group. And the fact that it's going to be away from home is going to be tricky. I think we've secured qualification. That's done and dusted. But it's all about finishing first now in the group. That final match day against Leverkusen is going to be massive. It is now time for a huge Premier League fixture that we've got ahead of us as we take on Spurs. This is going to be a really, really tricky game. And also the fact that Man United have dropped points. This is a big opportunity for us to close the gap down to just two points at the top of the Premier League. So we can't mess this up. I'm pretty sure this game is being played at the Stamford Bridge, which means we've got to have the home advantage. A win here is needed. Okay, wow. Spurs' new kits for the next season look absolutely fantastic. Fair enough, Spurs. I mean, those kits look absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, this is the team that I'm going for for this London derby game, I guess. Chelsea versus Spurs. We've got Werner, Salah, Pulisic starting. Kante captains the team. Ziyech Kovacic. Basically, the first team is in action. Rudiger, Longley, all of them starting. I'm ready for this one. We're up against the special one, Mourinho Spurs. Let's get this one underway. So that's the Spurs team we're facing. I guess there's a reason why they aren't challenging for top four at the moment. I mean, they kind of are, but they're lacking behind in like sixth place. But that team looks average. Harry Kane is their best player, no doubt. Bergwijn is decent, but apart from that, Loris, Segna, okay. But it looks pretty average for Spurs side. I think we've got a good chance here. If we win this game against Spurs right now, we'll be just two points off the top of the league. Two points behind Manchester United. There's huge incentive for us to get the job done here. Let's hope we can pull it off. First chance for us, Timo Werner. Good touch. Can he score though? Ooh, big save from Hugo Lloris in the first 10 minutes itself. Werner has to be scoring that though. Ben Chilwell looks for Pulisic. It's now Kovacic, the dribbling is on point, looks for Hakim Ziyech, gets it under control, shoots with that right foot and the post denies him. Why does it feel like we hit the post two or three times every single episode? It's so annoying, man. I know it was Ziyech's right foot, but still, to hit the post from there, ah, that's frustrating. Uh-oh, Harry Kane has gotten in behind our defence. Clément Langlais is keeping up with him, but it's going to be difficult. Cross comes in, it's a good ball and Bergwijn scores. Harry Kane, how did he beat Longley for pace there? I have no idea. The ball in was fantastic. Onside as well. And Spurs have taken the unlikely lead in this one. I think we've been the better team in the first 20 minutes. So it kind of hurts being 1-0 down. But we've made comebacks before and I reckon we can do it again. So I'm believing. I'm believing. We need three points here. Two points between us and Man United. That's the dream for now. So let's keep pushing. Uh-oh, that's a fantastic ball played to Bergwijn who goes for goal and Kepa saves us in that instance. It could have been 2-0 Spurs there. Mourinho looks a bit angry that Bergwijn didn't convert that. But Spurs now all over us ever since they took the lead. Chance for Bergwijn to whip in a good ball. Harry Kane wins the header. Another header. We somehow save it. But come on. They've, they've literally had two rebounds within a space of a minute there. What a joke. Honestly, what a joke. How are we 2-0 down to Spurs here? I have absolutely no idea. They've literally had two opportunities in this half and they've scored off both. This makes no sense. Mourinho shithousing his way to a win at the bridge. This can't be happening. Second half, we need a big improvement. The story of this first half is simple. We got our chances, we didn't take them. They got their chances, they took them. Second half, things need to change. We can't allow Man United to, you know, increase their gap at the top. 
We need to make a comeback in the second half anyhow. Harry Kane now and Spurs with another big chance. We've got to stop their attacks. Harry Kane shoots. Kepa somehow saves it. And it was so close to being another rebound for them. If it was another rebound, I'd probably just switch off my PC and I'm done for the day. But thankfully, that wasn't the case. And we survive and we might be able to hit them on the counter. Go on, Hakimi. We know how quick he is. Still, Hakimi looks for the cutback. Timo Werner shoots and no. How's that getting blocked? What a chance gone for us. That should be 2-1. Timo Werner has to be scoring that. Haven't really, we haven't really seen anything from Mo Salah in today's game. And hopefully now we could see something from the team. Timo Werner gets in behind. Fake shot inside. Brilliantly done from Werner. And even that gets saved. I don't know how. Save after save from Hugo Lloris. It's, it's getting outrageous at this point. How has he managed to save that? Slow build up, but we need to score soon. There isn't much time. Look at Mourinho's team, man. The way they're defending. It is just so toxic, but that's typical from a Mourinho team. It's so annoying to play against. Not gonna lie, I'm so frustrated. Spurs have completely outdone us here. We've had our chances, but it's a typical Mourinho team. They defended for their lives here. The work rate they put in, it was, it was crazy good. Fair enough. Jose Mourinho parked the bus and he's got his win. We've taken our first defeat of the season. It's unfortunate that it had to come at the bridge, but it is what it is. We've got to push on from here. And this is a good reality check. We, we haven't built the ultimate side. We still have a lot of improvements to make. The gap is now five points between us and Manchester United. Not looking good at all. Man City have overtaken us in the Premier League table as well. Liverpool just two points behind us. Man United definitely in the best possible situation. But there are three or four teams just, just behind trying to get past them. But it's going to be... A very interesting and different title race for once to, you know, see teams like United up there. Our next game in the Premier League, though, is away to Leicester, the King Power Stadium. We know that stadium really well, but they're ninth in the league and they're going to give us a tough fight. And we need to respond with that defeat with a win. So that's exactly what I'm hoping for. So we desperately need the big boys to deliver in this one against Leicester City. So I've gone for Werner, Salah, Ziyech, basically my first team. I'm not taking any chances. Bouncing back with a win is an absolute must in this fixture. Let's go out there and secure three points and get back to winning ways. Leicester City already on the front foot in this one. Corner comes in, Batshuayi with a header. Former Chelsea player himself, but thankfully that was off target, but not the start we wanted from this fixture. Leicester City look like they're up for it. Oh wow, Michi Batshuayi has just been played in behind. It could be his second chance of this game so far. We've defended that well. Douglas Costa and Longley with a good challenge, but the ball just goes right back to him. It makes no sense. Cross comes in far post. Ayose Perez tries to put it back in. Thankfully, we get it away, but man, it's been stressful so far. Has our confidence taken a hit after that Spurs defeat? Hopefully not. Problems for us. Oh, Batshuayi have made a big mistake there with Clement Longley, and that's cost us there. What are we doing? We've been in such impeccable form so far this season. Especially in the Premier League and now we're throwing it all away. We're giving Manchester United the title by performing like this. This is awful, man. This is awful. Batshuayi scores against this former team. The way I defended there with Longley, it was just appalling. Like, what even was I doing? And Kepa concedes near post. Hi, <sighs> comedy of errors here at the back. We've got to respond. We can't be dropping points in back-to-back -back Premier League games. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We've given away another chance to Leicester City. This is a joke. This is genuinely a joke. What am I even doing? I have no idea. 2-0 down to Leicester City. We're throwing away the Premier League. I know it's too early to say that, but giving United, what, a 8-point lead over us at this stage? That's, that'll be catastrophic come end of season. What was I doing with Longley, man? I don't get it. Oh, that is a wonderful cross and wow. Kepa, how are you not coming forward and collecting the ball? What's going on? 3-0 down to Leicester City in 40 minutes. Is this some sort of a joke? Has to be. Like, what? Kepa, Kepa lost out that race and the elements won the header. This has been a disastrous game for Kepa. Look at that. Just awful. I don't even want to look at that now. Yuri Tielemans scores and now what are we supposed to do here? We've completely thrown away our last two games in the Premier League and it's awful. Halftime, 3-0 down. We have basically no hope for a comeback. But you know what? Let's just, let's just do something crazy and see what happens. So, I'm bringing off Ziyech for hudson Adoy, and I'm switching our formation to a 4-2-4. I know this is batshit crazy, but we've nothing to lose at this point. We've been abysmal in the first half. Let's just try something different and hope that it works. 
Let's see how the 4-2-4 fares. A comeback is just, is just a dream. But Mo Salah though. Mo Salah on the turn. Bang. We get one back. We get one back. Mo Salah scores a lovely goal. Another one of those trademark Salah finishes. He literally scores this way every time. It's crazy. But yeah. 3-1. We're back in it, just about, just what we needed, come on. It's a free kick for Leicester City and you just know they're going to score this. You just know they're going to score this. Oh my god, Pulisic got a touch. That was close, but since we've scored, Leicester City have just been relentless and pushing forward. Attack after attack as Kepa makes another big mistake. Thankfully, that didn't cost us. Leicester still controlling and pushing, man. I thought since we scored, we'll have a bit more luck here. But look at this, we put in tackles, the ball just goes... Right back to Leicester City. There's simply nothing we can do. It's so frustrating. Like, look at this. They're keeping all the ball. We can't get the ball off them. Madison looks to curl one in. And it's just done that. What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do in this situation? I don't get it. Like, honestly, this has been just abysmal from us. And on the other hand, it's been a masterclass from Leicester City. Did you guys see how clean Madison struck that ball? Kepa again, what on earth are you doing not even getting your hand to it? Oh, look at that from Madison. I mean, wow. You know what? Can't even blame Kepa because that was inch perfect. Unbelievable from James Madison. I can't get the ball off them, man. It's so annoying. I put in tackles and still nothing happens. Like, freaking hell, man. What even is this game? I put a challenge there with Longley. He didn't even move his leg. And again, Kovacic. Then his pride just ball rolled past him. This game is a joke, man. I swear, we're going to... 5-1 against Leicester away. This this is a freaking joke. Just get me out of this game at this point. I don't even care. Like, look at how deep Leicester are right now. But when they're attacking, they, they get ahead so quickly. It just makes no sense, man. Mo Salah, though, with a chance. Can he score? He can. He gets us another goal back, but there's no point. Mo Salah with his second of the game, but two of the most pointless goals you'll see from Mo Salah. Were we even bad in this game? I just feel Leicester City was simply something special. Fair enough. They... They put in the performance of a lifetime here and they just finessed us. That goal Madison scored was just something else. Fair enough. I don't even know what to say. It's been a bit of a difficult episode, I'm not gonna lie. We took an L to Spurs and now back-to-back -back defeats to Leicester City as well. That's tough. Somehow we're still in the top four after getting embarrassed by Leicester City. But now the gap between us and Man United is eight points. Are we gonna once again not be involved in the title race in this series? Come on, man. That can't be the case. Next episode, we've got to fix up. Hopefully, today's episode was just a blip in form because otherwise we're in trouble. Leicester City now in seventh place. Now, next episode, we've got some interesting games, but the focus is mostly going to be on the Champions League as we've got our final group stage game and all that. But yeah, and that Man United game coming up soon as well. But today was a tough one. Next episode, we got to bounce back. So Antonio Rudiger's contract is expiring. I guess we know why the offers for him were so low. The last thing I want is letting him go for free. So we're going to definitely renegotiate his contract and get him to sign for us for a long time. I don't know if we'll sell him or not, but I don't want him leaving for free. That's for sure. It's just stupid to allow him to leave for free. So let's get this contract negotiations done. Important squad role. I'm surprised I expected him to ask for a crucial role. We'll accept a three-year contract deal as well. No probs at all. Accept the release clause and financial wise will remove the appearance bonus submit offer and then done 105,000 970k in signing bonus Absolutely perfect. Is he gonna accept it? He wants a bit more on the wages uh, That that'll work and well with that we're done with the negotiations with Rudiger I don't know how long he's gonna stay at Chelsea for but he signed another contract with us So he won't be leaving for cheap anytime soon. Of course as we were pretty awful on the pitch objectives wise We haven't made much progress the French wall more like the broken wall cuz trust me man Longley has been so average this season We did make a bit of progress with Billy Gilmore as well as the Salah objective But that's about it really quick discussion on the player of the episode award Let's be real the first team disappointed in this episode, but the second team boys did really well against City, helped us knock them out. So it's between Tammy Abraham who scored in that game and Loftus Cheek who also scored. So you decide in the comments section. Not gonna lie, it's been a difficult episode, you know, losing those two games, but it's been a good reality check. Next episode, we go again. Champions League football, Premier League stuff, gonna be fun. But if you guys are enjoying the series, keep the support coming in. Drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new around here. And well, I'll catch you all next time.